Hey everybody, Jared Jones. Today I am joined by mortgage lender extraordinaire, Jason Cota of Fairway Mortgage, one of my longstanding partners in the mortgage field. And if you know any real estate brokers um, that are doing a phenomenal work, they always have a tight team around them. And I count Jason to be uh, one of the sharpest professionals I've ever worked with in lending over 19 years of selling thousands of homes. He is uh, solid and um, he comes in clutch time after time, uh, not only providing um, high care and high service to clients that have high standards and want great interest rates, but also uh, comes in clutch when other lenders mess up deals or deals fall apart or, um, you know, just so many potential issues um, that uh, in the lending world, um, who you really do partner with matters because uh, not everybody is the same. It's just like any other industry. And I think probably more so um, that the, um, the impact on a client of working with someone who is poorly qualified in lending um, really can run you out of the market and possibly even cost you buying a house period. So with that, I want to uh, welcome Jason. And the reason I brought Jason on today is I want to talk about mortgage lending. I know there's a lot of um, you know, people in the marketplace right now who are considering getting in, they're thinking, you know what, I've been hearing that financing is different. They may have heard that it's easier. They may have heard that it's harder, but most everybody um, that may not even be a specialist in their field of real estate, um, who's even considering buying or selling might be thinking, you know what, COVID um, has changed its impact financial systems. It's impacted um, the mortgage industry and it did. So um, no matter what you've heard, uh, make no mistake that uh, when um, COVID slowed the economy in 2020, um, with it changed lending guidelines. And so I've got Jason on and me and him were talking about um, how things that we thought may be changed forever um, have, have come back. And, and some things that that did change during COVID just still have, are still the same. And so I wanted him to fare through those details and kind of uh, bring everybody up to speed. So Jason, welcome to, uh, welcome to the video. Thanks for having me, Jared. Happy to be here. So yeah, uh, obviously, you know, a lot of change last year. Um, our industry is always evolving anyways, but when you throw, you know, a bit of a monkey wrench into a situation economically and globally, um, you know, things, things tend to, change and evolve with those. Um, what we saw last year obviously came on really quick. Um, in a matter of overnight, we saw some pretty drastic changes initially that might have put some buyers out of the market at the time, whether unfortunately from a, a job standpoint, from being furloughed or, or temporarily laid off, um, to lending guidelines tightening um, because investors didn't know what to do in the stability of buyers' ability to make repayment and then even furthermore down the line, the secondary market and liquidity with mortgages on how the Fed and the government was going to handle this crisis when it came to home ownership. Um, so a few updates, I uh, just kind of wanted to reach out to everybody, you know, as we start to see these guidelines ease up back again, get back more to traditional um, lending criteria that we've been so comfortable with over the past several years, um, just get some updates out there so everybody knows where we stand and hopefully can get a few more people back into the market shopping for homes again. That might have uh, taken a step away for a short while. So the, the main update would be, you know, every year conforming loan limits change. And that's, you know, on average, how much you can borrow for, you know, your standard type of loan. So wanted to touch base on that since this is our first video together for the new year. Um, every county may be a little bit different depending upon if you're considered in a high cost area, but just general rule of thumb for this year, the conforming limit has moved to $548,250. So that is the base. Now in some areas, again, might be a little bit more before you become a jumbo loan, but that is where you can tow up to um, with your standard Fannie Mae Freddie Mac loans. Um, so that's been the biggest change, which is a, a huge jump from several years ago when it was 417,000 was the conforming limit, you know, not too long ago. Um, so that opens up you know, a, a lot more room for buyers to get out there with the homes that we're seeing increasing in price due to economic situations, low interest rates, creating more buyers, lack of housing and inventory. Um, the main, I think, change that we've seen recently from COVID to current um, is really credit. Um, when COVID hit last year, we saw credit score requirements tighten from anywhere from 640 to 680 
with lenders for your standard loans. Um, thankfully, those have started to ease back up as the economy has recovered and, and we're moving along uh, the line here. And we're now back down to a 580 minimum credit score. So good to be back at those low levels, help people out. Um, one thing for everyone to understand as well is even if you don't believe you're at a 580, um, or you're on that cusp of being there, we also on every file review our client's credit with them, but run simulators to see what can be done to help you get your score up. So if you're below a 580 or let's say you're at a 620, want to get you the best rates out there and get you up to a 680, 700, we're going to run those systems and software to be able to help guide you and putting you in the best position possible. But at least for a starting point now, we can start to get people in with a 580 minimum credit score. That's been the biggest, you know, jump that we've seen to be able to help more buyers. Um, secondly, when COVID again hit, we saw jumbo programs pretty much um, dry up. Reason being is they're not um, they're not insured like many other loans are. Uh, they're investor based, what we call portfolio programs, and those are always the riskiest loans because they're not insured and you know, the, they're typically the larger loan amount. Um, so those went away completely. Then they started to come back with minimum 30% down, 25% down. We're actually at right now, minimum of 15% down on our jumbo programs, which is amazing. In addition to that, for those of you who are aware of what PMI is, the additional insurance that is placed on loans when you do not put down 20%, our jumbo programs with 15% down do not have that additional insurance. So there's no PMI on our 15% down jumbo program. Those rates are very close to our standard rate, sub 3% still at this time. Um, so those are great programs that we're starting to see come back to help our buyers that are looking for uh, something above that new conforming loan limit. Um, and still sticking with jumbos, jumbos now we can get all the way up to $3 million on financing. Not the purchase price, but actually your loan amount being at $3 million. So that's been something that we've been seeing uh, come back more. I think we'll continue to see the easing in those programs uh, a little bit slower than, like I said, the standard Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac type loans because of the insurance reasons, but um, they are coming back. Um, bank statement programs, for those of you who are self-employed out there, a lot of times you take advantage of being self-employed and therefore you have deductions on your tax returns to provide yourself a tax shelter. But when it comes to the lending industry, we qualify you like all lenders do off of your taxable income. So uh, bank statement programs are a, a good alternative to traditional financing for those who are self-employed. Most banks, the problem has been with those programs is in a competitive market, Jared, as you know, having to write a 45 or 60 day escrow is not the most appealing to your sellers out there, right? They've got a lot of buyers, competitive market. Those are tough to get accepted. We can do those in-house for 30 days or less. So we can still remain competitive for our self-employed borrowers when having to use the alternative financing um, that exists nowadays in those bank statement programs. Um, another thing that just came out, it not a, wasn't a result of COVID that it went away, just hasn't existed before, that we're happy to see available is FHA, the Federal Housing Administration has now come out with a program for DREAMers or DACA borrowers, which is huge. There's, there's been, you know, a lot of people asking for that for some time. They just rolled out the program about two weeks ago. So anybody out there that has been in that situation, you have not been able to purchase because you're a DREAMer or, you know, or fall under that, that category of DACA, um, please contact us because we do have options to help you become a homeowner now uh, in this market. So that's been great. And then the final piece, I think that I just want to kind of remind everybody of, you know, markets and rates change all the time. Obviously interest rates have dropped to historical lows because of what we've seen with COVID recently. Um, eventually they're going to tick up, you know, the market's not going to sustain low rates. There's things like inflation and other economic um, information that's going to come up as the economy recovers, as we get further away from COVID and vaccinations and such, um, that's going to push rates up inherently. Um, keep in mind, this time last year, rates were at roughly 4.25 to 4.375%. So for those of you who may not have gotten to a home when 
2.25% was available um, or 2.5%. You know, rates today are still hovering 2.625 to 2.875% and still are historically amazing rates to take advantage of. Don't miss out on buying a home in the hopes of another round of something happening, dropping the rates even further than what we see them today. That's pretty much like the, the quick and short recap of where we're at today on updates. We'll, we'll keep you up to date as time moves on, new programs come out and credit eases. Um, but those are probably the main things that we've seen recently come out for us. Awesome, Jason. Hey, I appreciate your time, man. I was, um, I, you were telling me the other day that the 100% uh, uh, no income, no asset is coming back in a couple of weeks. Is that, is that still the case? Uh, we'd love to see it come back. I'm not sure if we're going to see that. <laughs> Man, that's funny. You kept that. You you kind of you kind of was serious there for a second. Like, uh, what do I say to this question? <laughs> Anyways, well, hey, it was. Hey, it's good to see Jason's uh, one of Jason's partners on the wall behind him in that in that picture, and uh, I think that's the new executive of his team. And so he. Uh, it's it's an onlooker. Make sure he's doing his job every day. So, hey, I want to thank Jason Coda again, Fairway Mortgage. I'm going to let everybody know that his information is going to be on the screen. We're going to do an outro at the end of this as well so you can take his contact information down. And I would tell you no matter what state you're in, if you're in the U.S., uh, Jason's licensed in multiple states, and chances are he can help you in some way no matter where you're at, and it would be worth your time, even if you've already talked to a lender, to get a second opinion, um, an additional opinion in, in mortgage is uh, benefits no one more than you. So um, I would tell you that if um, you are looking to do this, and if you've given any thought to buying a home in 2021 period, um, this is a process, it's not an event. And so you would start early and do yourself a huge service um, and reach out to Jason. He's gonna be a huge resource to you. So with that being said, let's continue the conversation in the comments. If you have uh, updates or future video ideas, or you just want to ask questions even here, be happy to take uh, any information and communicate with you and you kind of carry on the conversation online. With that, that's the end of the video. We'll talk to you guys all real soon. Buying or selling a home in Central Florida is expensive. The Jones Group leverages the latest technology and pass the savings on to you. List your home for just 1%. Buying a home, get $7,000 cash rebate before close. Make one call, that's all. Better service, lower fees.